Act Three of King Lear. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. King Lear by William Shakespeare. Act Three. Scene One. A heath. A storm with thunder and lightning. Enter Kent and a gentleman meeting. Who's there, besides foul weather? One minded like the weather, most unquietly. I know you. Where's the king? Contending with the fretful elements, bids the wind blow the earth into the sea, or swell the curled waters above the main, that things might change or cease, Tears his white hair, which the impetuous blasts, with eyeless rage, Catch in their fury and make nothing of, Strives in his little world of man to outscorn The to and fro conflicting wind and rain. This night, wherein the cub-drawn bear would crouch, The lion and the belly-pinched wolf, Keep their fur dry, unbonneted he runs, And bids what will take all. But... Who is with him? None but the fool who labours to outjest his heart-struck injuries. Sir, I do know you, and dare, upon the warrant of my note, commend a dear thing to you. There is division, although as yet the face of it be covered with mutual cunning, twixt Albany and Cornwall, who have, as who have not, that their great stars thrown and set high, servants who seem no less, which are to France the spies and speculations intelligent of our state. What hath been seen, either in snuffs and packings of the dukes, or the hard rain which both of them have borne against the old kind king, or something deeper, whereof perchance these are but furnishings. But true it is, from France there comes a power into this scattered kingdom, who, already wise in our negligence, have secret feet in some of our best ports, and are at point to show their open banner. Now, to you, if on my credit you dare build so far to make your speed to Dover, you shall find some that will thank you making just report of how unnatural and bemadding sorrow the king hath cause to plain. I am a gentleman of blood and breeding, and from some knowledge and assurance offer this office to you. I will talk further with you. No, do not, for confirmation that I am much more than my outwall. Open this purse, and take what it contains. If you shall see Cordelia, as fear not but you shall, show her this ring, and she will tell you who your fellow is that yet you do not know. Fie on this storm! I will go seek the king. Give me your hand. Have you no more to say? Few words, but to effect more than all yet, that when we have found the king, in which your pain that way, I'll this, he that first lights on him, hola the other. Exeunt severally. Scene two. Another part of the heath. The storm continues. Enter Lear and the fool. Blow, winds, and crack your cheeks. Rage! Blow, you cataracts and hurricanos. Spout till you have drenched our steeples, drowned the cocks. You sulphurous and thought-executing fires. Vaunt couriers to oak-cleaving thunderbolts. Singe my white head, and thou all-shaking thunder. Strike flat the thick rotundity of the world. Crack nature's moulds. All Germans spill at once that making grateful man. 
Oh, Uncle, cold holy water in a dry house is better than this rainwater out of the door. Good Uncle, in, and ask thy daughter's blessing. Here's a night pities neither wise men nor fools. Rumble thy bellyful, spit, fire, spout, rain, nor rain, wind, thunder, fire, are my daughters. I tax you not, you elements, with unkindness. I never gave you kingdom, called you children. You owe me no subscription. Then let fall your horrible pleasure. Here I stand, your slave, a poor, infirm, weak, and despised old man. But yet I call you servile ministers that will with two pernicious daughters join your high-engendered battle against a head so old and white as this. Oh, oh, tis foul. He that has a house to put his head in has a good headpiece. The codpiece that will house before the head has any, the head and he shall louse, so beggars marry many. The man that makes his toe, what he his heart should make, shall of a corn cry woe, and turn his sleep to wake. For there was never yet fair woman but she made mouths in a glass. Enter Kent. No, I will be the pattern of all patience. I will say nothing. <coughs> Who's there? Mary, here's grace in a codpiece. That's a wise man and a fool. Alas, sir, are you here? Things that love night love not such nights as these. Oh, the wrathful skies gallow the very wanderers of the dark, and make them keep their caves. Since I was man, such sheets of fire, such bursts of horrid thunder, <coughs> Such groans of roaring wind and rain I never remember to have heard. Man's nature cannot carry the affliction, nor the fear. Let the great gods that keep this dreadful pother o'er our heads find out their enemies now. Tremble, thou wretch that hast within thee undivulged crimes, unwhipped of justice. Hide thee, thou bloody hand, thou perjured, and thou similar man of virtue that art incestuous, caitiff to pieces shake, that under covert and convenient seeming hast practised on man's life. Close pent-up guilts, rive your concealing continence, and cry these dreadful summoners grace. I am a man more sinned against than sinning. Alack, bareheaded, gracious, my lord, Hard by here is a hovel. Some friendship will it lend you gainst the tempest. Repose you there. Whilst I to this hard house, more harder than the stones whereof tis raised, which even but now, demanding after you, denied me to come in, return and force their scanted courtesy. Thy wits begin to turn. Come on, my boy, how dost, my boy? Art cold? I am cold myself. Where is this straw, my fellow? The art of our necessities is strange, that can make vile things precious. Come, your hovel, poor fool and knave. I have one part in my heart that's sorry yet for thee. He that has and a little tiny wit with hey-ho the wind and the rain must make content with his fortunes fit for the rain it raineth every day true boy come bring us to this hovel exeunt lear and kent this is a brave night to cool a courtesan i'll speak a prophecy ere i go when priests are more in word than matter when brewers mar their malt with water, when nobles are their tailors' tutors, no heretics burnt, but wenches suitors, when every case in law is right, no squire in debt, nor no poor knight, when slanders do not live in tongues, nor cut purses come not to throngs, when usurers tell their gold in the field, and bods and horrors do churches build, then shall the realm of Albion come to great confusion. Then comes the time, who lives to see it, that going shall be used with feet. 
This prophecy Merlin shall make, for I live before his time. Exit. Scene 3. A room in Gloucester's castle. Enter Gloucester and Edmund. Alack, alack, Edmund, I like not this unnatural dealing. When I desired their leave that I might pity him, they took from me the use of mine own house, charged me on pain of perpetual displeasure neither to speak of him, entreat for him, nor any ways sustain him. Most savage and unnatural! Go to, say you nothing. There is division betwixt the dukes, and a worse matter than that. I have received a letter this night. Tis dangerous to be spoken. I have locked the letter in my closet. These injuries the king now bears will be revenged home. There's part of a power already footed. We must incline to the king. I will seek him, and privily relieve him. Go you, and maintain talk with the duke, that my charity be not of him perceived. If he ask for me, I am ill, and gone to bed. If I die for it, as no less is threatened me, the king, my old master, must be relieved. There is some strange thing toward, Edmund. Pray you, be careful. Exit. This courtesy, forbid thee, shall the duke instantly know, and of that letter too. This seems a fair deserving, and must draw me that which my father loses, no less than all. The younger rises when the old doth fall. Exit. Scene four. A part of the heath with a hovel. Storm continues. Enter Lear, Kent, and the fool. Here is the place, my lord. Good, my lord, enter. The tyranny of the open night's too rough for nature to endure. Let me alone. Good, my lord. Enter here. Wilt break my heart? I had rather break mine own. Good, my lord, enter. Thou think'st tis much that this contentious storm invades us to the skin. So tis to thee. But where the greater malady is fixed, the lesser is scarce felt. Thou'd shun a bear. But if thy flight lay towards the raging sea, thou'dst meet the bear in the mouth. When the mind's free, the body's delicate. The tempest in my mind doth from my senses take all feeling, else save what beats there. Filial ingratitude! Is it not as this mouth should tear this hand for lifting food to it? But I will punish home. No, I will weep no more. In such a night to shut me out, poor on, I will endure. In such a night as this, O Regan Goneril, your, your kind old father, whose frank heart gave all. Oh, that way madness lies. Let me shun that. No more of that. Good, my lord, enter here. Prithee go in thyself. Seek thine own knees. This tempest will not give me leave to ponder on things would hurt me more. But I'll go in. In, boy, go first. You houseless poverty, nay, get thee in. I'll pray, and then I'll sleep. Exit the fool. Poor naked wretches, wheresoe'er you are, that bide the pelting of this pitiless storm, how shall your houseless heads and unfed sides, your loops and windows raggedness, defend you from seasons such as these? Oh, I attain too little care of this. Take physic pomp, expose thyself to feel what wretches feel, that thou mayst shake the superflux to them, and show the heavens more just. Have them an arf, have them an arf, poor Tom. Enter the fool from the hovel. Come not in here, Nuncle, here's a spirit, help me, help me. Give me thy hand, who's there? A spirit, a spirit, he says his name's poor Tom. What art thou that dost grumble there in the straw? Come forth. Enter Edgar, disguised as poor Tom. Away! The foul fiend follows me. Through the sharp hawthorn blows the cold wind. 
<sighs> Go to thy cold bed and warm thee. Didst thou give all to thy two daughters, and art thou come to this? Who gives anything to poor Tom? Whom the foul fiend hath led through fire and through flame, through ford and whirlpool, o'er bog and quagmire, that hath laid knives under his pillow, and halters in his pew, set ratsbane by his porridge, made him proud of heart to ride on a bay trotting horse over four inch bridges to curse his own shadow for a traitor. Bless thy five wits. Tom's cold. Oh, do de do, do de do de. Bless thee from whirlwind, star blasting, and taking. Do poor Tom some charity, whom the foul fiend vexes. There could I have him now, and there, and there again, and there. What? Have his daughters brought him to this pass? Couldst thou save nothing? Didst thou give them all? Nay, he reserved a blanket, else we had been all shamed. Now all the plagues that in the pendulous air hang fated o'er men's faults light on thy daughters. He hath no daughter, sir. Death, traitor! Nothing could have subdued nature to such lowness but his unkind daughters. Is it the fashion that discarded fathers should have thus little mercy on their flesh? Judicious punishment! Twas this flesh begot those pelican daughters. Pillicock sat on Pillicock Hill. Halloo, halloo, loo, loo. This cold night will turn us all to fools and madmen. Take heed of the foul fiend. Obey thy parents. Keep thy word justly. Swear not. Commit not with man's sworn spouse. Set not thy sweetheart on proud array. Tom's a cold. What hast thou been? A serving man, proud in heart and mind, that curled my hair, wore gloves in my cap, served the lust of my mistress's heart, and did the act of darkness with her. <laughs> Swore as many oaths as I spake words, and broke them in the sweet face of heaven, one that slept in the contriving of lust, and waked to do it. Wine loved I deeply, dice dearly, and in woman out paramoured the Turk. False of heart, light of air, bloody of hand, hog in sloth, fox in stealth, wolf in greediness, dog in madness, lion in prey. Let not the creaking of shoes nor the rustling of silks betray thy poor heart to woman. Keep thy foot out of brothel, thy hand out of placket, thy pen from lender's book, and defy the foul fiend. Still, through the hawthorn blows the cold wind, says some money. Dolphin, my boy, boy, sessa. Let him trot by. Why, thou wert better in thy grave than to answer with thy uncovered body this extremity of the skies. Is man no more than this? Consider him well. Thou owest the worm no silk, the beast no hide, the sheep no wool, the cat no perfume. Ah, here's three ones are sophisticated. Thou art the thing itself. Unaccommodated man is no more but such a poor, bare, forked animal as thou art. Off, off, you lendings. Come, unbutton here. He tears off his clothes. Prithee, Nuncle, be contented. Tis a naughty night to swim in. Now, a little fire in a wild field were like an old lecher's heart, a small spark, all the rest one's body cold. Look, here comes a walking fire. Enter Gloucester with a torch. This is the foul fiend flibbity gibbet. He begins at curfew and walks till the first cock. He gives the web and the pen, squints the eye and makes the hair lip, mildews the white wheat and hurts the poor creature of earth. Swith old footed thrice the old, he met the nightmare and her ninefold. Bid her alight, and her troth plight, and aroint thee, witch, aroint thee. How fares your grace? What's he? To Gloucester. Who's there? What is't you seek? What are you there? Your names? Poor Tom, that eats the swimming frog, the toad, the tadpole, the walnut, and the water that in the fury of his heart when the foul fiend rages eats cow-dung for salads swallows the old rat and the ditch-dog 
drinks the green mantle of the standing pool, who is whipped from tithing to tithing, and stocked, punished, and imprisoned, who hath had three suits to his back, six shirts to his body, horse to ride, and weapons to wear. But mice and rats and such small deer have been Tom's food for seven long year. Beware, my follower. Peace, smoking. Peace, thou fiend. What? Hath your grace no better company? The Prince of Darkness is a gentleman. Modo, he's called, and Mahu. Our flesh and blood, my lord, is grown so vile that it doth hate what gets it. Poor Tom's a cold. Go in with me. My duty cannot suffer to obey in all your daughter's hard commands, though their injunction be to bar my doors, and let this tyrannous night take hold upon you. Yet have I ventured to come seek you out, and bring you where both fire and food is ready. First, let me talk with this philosopher. To Edgar. What is the cause of thunder? Good, my lord, take this offer, go into the house. I'll talk a word with this same learned Theban. To Edgar. What is your study? How to prevent the fiend and to kill vermin. Let me ask you one word in private. Lear and Edgar talk apart. Importune him once more to go, my lord. His wits begin to unsettle. Canst thou blame him? His daughters seek his death. Ah, that good Kent! He said it would be thus, poor banished man. Thou sayest the king grows mad. I'll tell thee, friend, I am almost mad myself. I had a son, now outlawed from my blood. He sought my life, but lately... Very late. I loved him, friend. No father his son dearer. True to tell thee, the grief hath crazed my wits. What a night's this! I do beseech your grace. Oh, cry you mercy, sir, noble philosophy, your company. Tom's a cold. In, fellow, there, into the hovel. Keep thee warm. Come, let's in all. This, this way, my lord. With him I will keep still with my philosopher. Good my lord, soothe him, let him take the fellow. Take him you on. Sirrah, come on, go along with us. Come, good Athenian. No words, no words, hush. Child Roland to the dark tower came. His word was still, fie, foe, and fum. I smell the blood of a British man. Exeunt. Scene five. A room in Gloucester's castle. Enter Cornwall and Edmund. I will have my revenge ere I depart his house. How, my lord, I may be censured, that nature thus gives way to loyalty, something fears me to think of. I now perceive it was not altogether your brother's evil disposition made him seek his death but a provoking merit, set a work by a reprovable badness in himself. How malicious is my fortune, that I must repent to be just! This is the letter he spoke of, which approves him an intelligent party to the advantages of France. Oh, heavens, that this treason were not, or not I the detector. Go with me to the Duchess. If the matter of this paper be certain— you have mighty business in hand. True or false, it hath made thee Earl of Gloucester. Seek out where thy father is, that he may be ready for our apprehension. If I find him comforting the king, it will stuff his suspicion more fully. I will persevere in my course of loyalty, though the conflict be sore between that and my blood. I will lay trust upon thee and thou shalt find a dearer father in my love. Exeunt Scene 6 A chamber in a farmhouse adjoining the castle. Enter Gloucester, Lear, Kent, the Fool, and Edgar. Here is better than the open air. Take it, thankfully. I will piece out the comfort with what addition I can. I will not be long from you. All the power of his wits have given way to his impatience. The gods reward your kindness. Exit Gloucester. 
Fratteretto calls me, and tells me Nero is an angler in the Lake of Darkness. Pray, innocent, and beware the foul fiend. Prithee, Nuncle, tell me whether a madman be a gentleman or a yeoman. A king, a king. No, he's a yeoman that has a gentleman to his son, for he's a mad yeoman that sees his son a gentleman before him. To have a thousand with red burning spits come hissing in upon him. The foul fiend bites my back. He's mad that trusts in the tameness of a wolf, a horse's health, a boy's love, or a whore's oath. It shall be done. I will arraign them straight. To Edgar. Come, sit thou here, most learned justicer. To the fool. Thou, sapient sir, sit here. Now you see foxes. Look where he stands and glares. Once thou eyes at trial, madam. Come o'er the bourne, Bessie, to me. Her boat hath a leak, and she must not speak. Why, she dares not come over to thee. The foul fiend haunts poor Tom in the voice of a nightingale. Hoppy dance cries in Tom's belly for two white herring. Croak not, black angel, I have no food for thee. How do you, sir? Stand you not so amazed? Will you lie down and rest upon the cushions? I'll see their trial first. Bring in their evidence. To Edgar. Thou, a robed man of justice, take thy place. To the fool. And thou, his yoke-fellow of equity, bench by his side. To Kent. You are of the commission, uh, sit you too. Let us deal justly. Sleepest or wakest thou, jolly shepherd? Thy sheep be in the corn, and for one blast of thy minikin mouth, thy sheep shall take no arm. The cat is grey. Arraign her first. Tis Goneril. I here take my oath before this honourable assembly. She kicked the poor king, her father. Come hither, mistress. Is your name Goneril? She cannot deny it. Cry you mercy, I took you for a joint stool. And here's another, whose warped looks proclaim what store her heart is made on. Stop her there, arms, arms, sword, fire, corruption in the place. False justicer, why hast thou let her scape? Bless thy five wets. Oh, pity! Sir, where is the patience now that you so oft have boasted to retain? My tears begin to take his part so much they'll mar my counterfeiting. The little dogs and all, Trey, Blanche, and Sweetheart, see, they, they bark at me. Tom will throw his head at them. Avaunt, ye curs! Be thy mouth or black or white, tooth that poisons if it bite, mastiff, greyhound, mongrel, grim, hound or spaniel, brack or lem, or bobtail, tyke or trundle tail, Tom will make them weep and wail. For with throwing thus my head, dogs leap the hatch and all are fled. Do dee dee dee, sissa. Come, march to wakes and fairs and market towns. Poor Tom, thy horn is dry. Then let them anatomize Regan, see what breeds about her heart. Is there any cause in nature that makes these hard hearts? You, sir, I entertain you for one of my hundred. Only I do not like the fashion of your garments. You'll say they are Persian, but let them be changed. Now, good my lord, lie here and rest a while. Make no noise, make no noise, draw the curtains. So, so, we'll go to supper in the morning. And I'll go to bed at noon. Enter Gloucester. Come hither, friend. Where is the king, my master? No, here, sir. But trouble him not. His wits are gone. Good friend, I prithee, take him in thy arms. I have o'erheard a plot of death upon him. There is a litter ready. Lay him in it, and drive towards Dover, friend, where thou shalt meet both welcome and protection. Take up thy master. If thou shouldst dally half an hour, his life with thine, and all that offer to defend him, stand in assured loss. Take up, take up, and follow me, that will to some provision give thee quick conduct. Oppressed nature sleeps. 
this rest might yet have bound thy broken sinews, which, if convenience will not allow, stand in hard cure to the fool. Come, help to bear thy master. Come, come, away. Exeunt Kent, Gloucester, and the fool, bearing off the king. When we our betters see bearing our woes, We scarcely think our miseries are foes. Who alone suffers, suffers most i' the mind, Leaving free things and happy shows behind? But then the mind much sufferance doth o'er skip, When grief hath mates and bearing fellowship. How light and portable my pain seems now, when that which makes me bend makes the king bow. He childed as I fathered. Tarm away, mark the eye noises, and thyself bewray, when false opinion whose wrong thought defiles thee, in thy just proof repeals and reconciles thee. What will ap more to-night safe scape the king? Lurk, lurk. Exit. Scene seven. A room in Gloucester's castle. Enter Cornwall, Regan, Goneril, Edmund, and servants. To Goneril. Post speedily to my lord your husband. Show him this letter. The army of France is landed. Seek out the traitor Gloucester. Exeunt some servants. Hang him instantly. Pluck out his eyes. Leave him to my displeasure. Edmund, keep you our sister company. The revenges we are bound to take upon your traitorous father are not fit for your beholding. Advise the duke where you are going, to a most festinate preparation. We are bound to the like. Our posts shall be swift and intelligent betwixt us. Farewell, dear sister. Farewell, my lord of Gloucester. Enter Oswald. How now? Where's the king? My lord of Gloucester hath conveyed him hence. Some five or six and thirty of his knights, hot questrists after him, met him at gate, who, with some other of the lord's dependents, are gone with him towards Dover, where they boast to have well-armed friends. Get horses for your mistress. Exit Oswald. Farewell, sweet lord, and sister. Edmund, farewell. Exeunt Goneril and Edmund. Go seek the traitor Gloucester, pinion him like a thief, bring him before us. Exeunt servants. Though well we may not pass upon his life, without the form of justice, yet our power shall do a courtesy to our wrath, which men may blame, but not control. Enter Gloucester, brought in by two or three servants. Who's there? The traitor? Ingrateful fox, tis he. Bind fast his corky arms. What mean your graces? Good, my friends, consider you are my guests. Do me no foul play, friends. Bind him, I say. Servants tie his hands. Hard, hard, oh, filthy traitor. Unmerciful lady as you are, I'm none. To this chair bind him. Villain, thou shalt find. Regan plucks his beard. By the kind gods, tis most ignobly done to pluck me by the beard. So white and such a traitor. Naughty lady, these hairs, which thou dost ravish from my chin, will quicken and accuse thee. I am your host. With robber's hands, my hospitable favours you should not ruffle thus. What will you do? Come, sir, what letters had you late from France? Be simple answered, for we know the truth. And what confederacy have you with the traitors late-footed in the kingdom? To whose hands have you sent the lunatic king? Speak. I have a letter, guessingly set down, which came from one that's of a neutral heart, and not from one opposed. Cunning. And false. Where hast thou sent the king? To Dover. Wherefore to Dover? Wast thou not charged at peril? Wherefore to Dover? Let him first answer that. I am tied to the stake and I must stand the course. Wherefore to Dover, sir? 
because I would not see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes, nor thy fierce sister in his anointed flesh stick boorish fangs. The sea, with such a storm as his bare head in hell-black night endured, would have buoyed up and quenched the stelled fires, yet, poor old heart, he hope the heavens to reign. If wolves had at thy gate howled that stern time, thou shouldst have said, Good porter, turn the key. All cruels else subscribed, but I shall see the winged vengeance overtake such children. See it thou shalt never. Fellows, hold the chair. Upon these eyes of thine I'll set my foot. He that will think to live till he be old, give me some help, O oh, cruel, O oh, ye gods. One side will mock another, the other do. If you see vengeance. Hold your hand, my lord. I have served you ever since I was a child, but better service have I never done you than now to bid you hold. How now, you dog? If you did wear a beard upon your chin, I'd shake it on this quarrel. Cornwall draws his sword. What do you mean? My villain. He lunges at him. Nay then, come on, and take the chance of anger. He wounds Cornwall. Give me thy sword. A peasant stand up thus. She takes a sword and runs at him behind. Oh, I am slain. My lord, you have one eye left to see some mischief on him. Oh. He dies. Lest it see more, prevent it. Out, vile jelly. Where is thy lustre now? All dark and comfortless. Where's my son, Edmund? Edmund, enkindle all the sparks of nature to quit this horrid act. Thou treacherous villain, thou gallst on him that hates thee. It was he that made the overture of thy treasons to us. Who is too good to pity thee? Oh, my follies! Then Edgar was abused. Kind gods, forgive me that, and prosper him. Go thrust him out at gates, and let him smell his way to Dover. Exit a servant with Gloucester. How is it, my lord? How look you? I have received a hurt. Follow me, lady. Turn out that eyeless villain. Throw this slave upon the dunghill. Regan, I bleed apace. Untimely comes this hurt. Give me your arm. Exit Cornwall, supported by Regan. I'll never care what wickedness I do, if this man come to good. If she live long, and in the end meet the old course of death, women will all turn monsters. Let's follow the old earl and get the bedlam to lead him where he would. His roguish madness allows itself to anything. Go thou. I'll fetch some flax and whites of eggs to apply to his bleeding face. Now heaven help it. Exeunt by opposite doors. End of Act Three